Welcome to Subject to Change, a sustainability podcast. So your initial reaction was, yes, the Fortune 500 companies are doing this, but I am a way different animal than a Canon design. I work with like very much significantly smaller projects as an interior designer. I work with a number of people where sustainability, even nuts and bolts sustainability is just not even on their radar. So how do we get, what's, what's my, what's, what's my pull point? What's my strategy? Five strategies. You don't have one strategy. You'd have at least five. Clearly. That's the, that's <laughs> the trick of it. No, I mean, I mean, first and foremost, you'd have to explain to them that whether they, whether they want to acknowledge this or not, this is reality and it's happening and it's already affecting them. So we'll do a, um, a resiliency. I call it a dashboard because I don't know what else to call it, but we'll do like a resiliency analysis mm -hmm. for that specific location. Cool. Um, because I want them to know, you, you know, hey, remember that hurricane from a few years ago? That's, that's your new normal, that unpredictable, like you don't know when it's going to happen. That's your new normal. And these are the kind of the other stresses and shocks that are tied to that. So we do this kind of resiliency dashboard um, as a way to, uh, to spurn that discussion. So that, that way they know that this is your reality and you, you, you can choose not to have a climate action plan, that's fine, but it doesn't change the, the reality that you need one. Number, number two, um, you know, it, it's funny because I've been in so many meetings over the years with architects and interior designers where they would tell me that they would show clients stuff and they would say, God, I hope they pick the green one. And, and I'm like, so, so let me get this straight. You're sitting in the meeting, you're offering them ideas and you're secretly wishing, well, gosh, I hope they pick that one and not these. Yeah. And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay, then why are you even offering yeah, the non-green right. ones? Yeah. Why aren't you only offering the stuff that you, you want to pick that doesn't make sense to me? Well, because I think we're supposed to. Okay, well then why don't you actually have the conversation? What I've discovered is uh, when I actually engage the school or the hospital or the facilities person or the office people or whatever about this material and I ask them, why do you do this? They go, because we've always done it. Always done and I go, do you actually like it? And again, it comes back to pain. Those pain points become opportunities to innovate. And so every school hates their vinyl floor. I hate vinyl because of different reasons. <laughs> So if you hate it and I hate it, why are we even offering it? Let's find alternatives. Well, it's too expensive. Well, is it? Is it? Because, <laughs> because your blood pressure is going up just talking about it and your maintenance people have to take care of it and it looks like uh, poo and on and on and on. This is uh, number three is then redefining cost. Mm -hmm. To me, I'm just done having these conversations where, you know, we're, do we're doing this now. We're working, at, we're working on several cancer facilities and and uh, on all of them, I basically pitched the same idea of like, hey, can we agree not to put cancer causing chemicals in the exactly. cancer facility? Exactly, yeah. Thank you very much. Like bomb. And, yeah, exactly. And they're like, oh, that's a, that's a good idea. I'm like, great. But for one of them, and I won't say which one, uh, the, the client, and you know, with the best of intention, right, said, well, what, what, do you think the, what do you think it's gonna cost us to not have mm -hmm. these kind of traditional chemicals, these cancer causing chemicals in the building? And we did a very quick analysis and it was like, um, it was like, uh, I think it was $26,000. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wow, $26,000. He's complaining about $26,000. In the same breath that he's complaining about $26,000, he literally turns in his chair to somebody else and says, hey, where are we with the $26 million parking garage that we're building next door? Is that done yet? That kind of thing. And it's like, that's, that to me shows it's never been about the money. Yeah. Right. right. You're complaining about twenty six thousand dollars to not have introduced cancer causing, you know, chemicals in the building, but we're subsidizing free parking for everybody to the tune of twenty six million. At that point, it's not about the money as much as it is priorities, and so that means that I fail to sell the priority of not putting cancer causing chemicals in the building, and I guess GM or whomever has really, really sold them on. Yeah, you got to provide free parking for everybody. Number four. Uh, is really then reframing every single argument. So yeah. it's, it's much more about expectation. So we redefine cost by essentially saying, okay, if we're going to do anything out of the ordinary, anything innovative or alternative, let's do a life cycle cost of it. Right, right, right. So I'm not comparing upfront to upfront. I'm comparing upfront to maintenance operations, efficiency, repair, replacement, and then also adding non-financial things like comfort, user satisfaction, acoustics, 
uh, you know, really focusing on the outcomes that I want from it. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's great. So that's what you need to do. I mean, you got to you got to redefine cost. It's you know, a large part of being a sustainability person today is reframing the argument. Yeah. And that's that's more important than anything. You know, it's funny because I meet these people that are like, I want to get into sustainability, but I don't know enough about, I don't know, green roofs or whatever. I mean, first of all, you can read a book about green roofs at your library for free. So that's not a problem. <laughs> Number two, your skill that you need to develop is not a technical skill around green roofs. The skill you really need to develop is arguing <laughs> and well, getting, good, getting good at arguing with people. Um, because if I go head to head and you've got toxic building here, and a, and a building that's trying to do more here, of course, the building that's trying to do more will always appear more expensive up front. But if we're really reframing the entire argument of I'm giving you a better building and everything I'm doing has a payback, yeah, it might not just be financial, it might be something else, then suddenly you're reframing the entire argument. And that's really what, what we're after here. And, and then number five is really focused on the outcomes. People are the biggest most important and most expensive part of every building, right? It's what we spend the most money on. And so I don't sell them on lead. I don't sell them on solar panels. I don't, you know, those are tools. Right. Those are means to an end. All that I'm selling them on is outcomes. So I will go through several outcomes and we'll say, which of these are important to you? And what would it mean to you to have these outcomes? And some of the, some of the outcomes are very precise. They're like, we're going to improve patient recovery times. We're going to improve student test scores. And they're tied to a baseline and a metric and, and, you know, some people, their KPI and their bonuses are tied to those same outcomes. Right, right. So if, if we take this outcomes-based approach to sustainability, we can achieve the same thing. And the beautiful part is it doesn't, it doesn't get value engineered out. I'm not selling them on one thing. If I sell them on a green roof, a green roof can get value engineered out. But if I sell them on, um, you know, improving employee satisfaction, well, there's many ways to get there. This has been Subject to Change, a sustainability podcast. We really appreciate your time, Eric. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Inspiring, um, challenging, and clear. I mean. Oh, yeah? Yeah, very clear. Sometimes uh, we wander a little bit more. You you brought us back to some real (laughs) stepping stones for improved action. And I think I know that I'm going to be keeping them in mind as I do work going forward as a refresher on what needs to be done. And I'm sure Lauren too, and whoever watches, you know, the 32 followers are going to be inspired by you. Oh, great. Well, we could, you know, there's only 32 of them. We could all go to a movie. That's true. Once we can do that, spread out. I'm I'm vaccinated. I'm ready to go. Well, it was my pleasure. It was great seeing you both. And um, yeah, thank you for, thank you for having me.